Hello, fellow crafters. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSassSteam.com. Welcome back for another Yippee for Yana video. Today I'll show you how to steam beautiful, colorful floral patterns for your cards using solid floral stamps. The steam set I will be using is this Anna's Flowers set from Simon. You can also look through your stash for similar type solid floral images. I love that this set has the same type flower in various sizes, and we will be stamping nearly every size to make backgrounds for our cards today. I've gotten some clear blocks ready, and I'm positioning the stamps I'm planning to use onto these blocks. I first planned to use the other style flower for my stamping, but when I started stamping my patterns, I realized I didn't really need the other style flower, so I didn't use it. So you actually have four sizes of the same style flower in this stamp set, and that's plenty to make fabulous floral backgrounds. Okay, I'm going to stamp three patterns today. They are going to be monochromatic, and I'll stamp the flowers using various shades of the same color of ink. My first one is going to be stamped in blue and teal, and the colors I have picked are Lake Shores, Spring Rain, High Dive, Cloudy Sky, and Audrey Blue. All of these are Simon Says Stamp dye inks. You can use any other ink pads you have in your stash. I happen to prefer to use dye type inks for these kinds of backgrounds. I have five colors, but you can easily stamp a pattern like this using just four or even three colors of ink. I will be doing my stamping on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and as you can see, I'm not using my Misty stamping tool, but stamping these with clear blocks, and that actually makes the stamping process go faster. Also, I'm not looking for absolutely perfectly stamped images. These do stamp really well as is, but should I have slight stamping imperfections on my panel, I'm not going to worry about it because of the style of the background pattern I'm going for. Once we are done stamping the pattern, should there be any imperfections, they really won't be visible on the finished card. Because these are brand new stamps, I first inked the stamp up and stamped it off to the side a few times to prime it. And you can see that the second impression was already better than the first one. When stamping patterns like this, the only rule I follow is the rule of a triangle. I try to stamp my images in groups of three, and when stamping them, I try to form a triangle. This makes the pattern a lot more pleasing to the eye. Having stamped the largest flower, I use a medium-sized flower and another color of ink. And again, I ink up the image and try to stamp it somewhat randomly on the background, filling in the gaps, yet stamping it so that the stamped images form a triangle. I still have quite big gaps in the background, so using smaller images will not fill the gaps in at this point. I'm going back to the largest flower and stamping it on the background using a slightly different shade of ink, making those flowers pop on the background. And again, notice the placement of the images. Now I can come in with my smaller flowers and fill any open spaces in. I'm using a different color of ink for each of the flowers. This just adds diversity to my background. And here's a look at the finished piece. Backgrounds like these are super easy to make. Just follow that one rule and you'll have yourself awesome backgrounds. Let's try this one more time, but with yellow colors. The ink colors I picked are sunshine, duckling, apricot, clementine, melon, and lemon zing. Before I start stamping with these colors, I need to clean my stamps to remove the blue ink that I have left on the stamps. I like to use my Simon Says Stamp Ultra Clean Cleaning Solution and my Gina K Stamp Chamois. I spray the chamois with the Ultra Clean Solution, and then I just rub my stamps clean. I keep my chamois in an old airtight plastic candy uh, container to keep it moist. I'm going to speed up this part of the video as I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm stamping the same pattern, but using different ink colors. You can go as light or as dark as you want. You don't have to go monochromatic. You can mix various colors. But I think that the monochromatic patterns look the best. There is just something peaceful and calming about them. I don't know why. 
I also stamped one more pattern using pinks. I used rose apple, doll pink, teeny bikini, twirling tutu, and hollyhock ink colors. I did plan to use the rosy cheeks color, but ended up not using it as it seemed too light for this pattern. But like I said, you can go as light or as dark as you like. These flowers look really phenomenal, and you can also layer them. You can stamp the medium-sized flower over the large one in a slightly different, darker color of ink to have a dimensional flower. Or you can use the smallest flowers as flower centers, and I'm yet to explore stamping that. Here's a look at the patterns that I have stamped. I did stamp yellow pattern twice as I didn't like the colors on the first pattern. From here, you can take your backgrounds anywhere you like. You can stamp on them, you can die cut them, you can heat emboss a sentiment on them, really anything you want to do. I love to foil, so I thought I would use a few glimmer plates from Spellbinders and foil a frame as well as a sentiment for each of these. I used a beautiful geometric frame from the Framed Details Glimmer Hot Foil set. I love the double line on this plate. And I foiled it in matte gold foil on all of my panels. I then used a rectangle die and cut all of the foiled panels out. As for the sentiments, I picked several messages from the Everyday Sentiments 2 set and foiled birthday wishes, thinking of you, and sending love. In case you're new to foiling, let me show you the basics. I like to tape the glimmer plate onto the panel to make sure it foils exactly where I want it foiled. Think of this as die cutting, especially when die cutting a stamped image out using a coordinating die. You always tape that die in place so that it doesn't shift. Having taped the glimmer plate in place on the panel, we created a hinge. Make sure you tape it on one side only. Next, flip the plate away from the panel, then cut your foil to size. I actually always cut mine a little bit bigger. Place the foil on the panel and flip the plate back into place. Then if you need to, trim the foil and tape the plate with another piece of low-tech tape, washi tape, just so that everything stays in place. We do not want anything moving. Next, bring in your hot foil machine. I'm using the Glimmer Hot Foil Machine from Spellbinders. And place your panel with a glimmer plate and foil onto the surface of the machine. My machine has been on for a few minutes already, so it is ready to foil. Press the timer button and wait for about a minute for the machine to heat up your plate. At this point, I like to add my plates and shims on top. Now, I do add one cardstock shim to increase the pressure, but the need to add the cardstock shim will depend on your die cutting machine. Some machines don't need any shims, while other machines give better results with a shim involved. This is just something you'll need to test personally for your die cutting machine. Once the light has stopped flashing, take the platform from the docking station and run it through your die cutting machine to foil. Go very slow, then go back and place the platform back into the docking station so that it remains hot and you can continue foiling because remember, we still have sentiments to foil. Now let's take a look. This is my favorite part, peeling the foil and it looks gorgeous. It foiled beautifully. I'm going to foil the sentiments in the exact same way. But I'll foil them on white cardstock as I later want to trim them out using a banner die. Here's one of the sentiments foiled. It is so pretty. I love the matte gold foil. It is still gold, but the shine is a little bit more subtle compared to the regular shiny gold. Very pretty. If you have overfoiling and that is normal, just use a pencil eraser and erase it. I have a bit of overfoiling on all of my frames and I can easily take care of that with my Tombow Mana sanding eraser. With all the components ready, we can assemble our cards. I have already adhered the panels onto A2 white card bases. I used Fun Foam when adhering the panels to the card bases to add dimension to my cards. Next, I'm using a ruler and foam mounting the sentiments onto the panels. I can never place these things straight, so I always need to use a ruler to help me position sentiments. Lastly, my cards would not be complete without some sequins. I'm using gold sequins from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm scattering them around the panel with the help of a Zig two-way glue pen 
and my Crystal Katana pickup tool. And my cards are done. Here's a look at the three projects I have for you today. These were easy to make and stamping the floral pattern was a treat. I love all of these, but I think the teal one is my favorite. Which one do you like best? Let me know in the comments below. If you make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!